Brothers, my dearest listeners, I will speak in the English language, inshallah. And thereafter, perhaps we will have a translation. We will keep it as easy and as simple as possible. The reason is, I'd like to see the benefit of this speech, inshallah, go to the rest of the world. My brothers and sisters, Allah Almighty has sent to us Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah Almighty has used many of us to spread the message of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our own ways. A father of the house is supposed to spread the message of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to those who are under his care and authority. A mother of the house is supposed to use the position that Allah has given her to spread the sunnah and the teachings of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to those who are under her care and guidance. Every one of us has a duty to learn, to learn the teachings of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because those teachings are from Allah. And when we learn those teachings, it is the only path to true success. And when we put those teachings into practice and we then give it to others, we are fulfilling the circle that Allah Almighty wants us to fulfill. The haqq of ilm, the right of knowledge is not only that you know it, but you know it you learn it, you put it into practice, and you convey it to others. And Islam has given so much importance to convey knowledge that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when you convey knowledge and teach someone goodness, you have a full reward of everyone who will practice on it. If I taught you something, I get a reward if you do it. If you teach him, you will get a reward for him and I will get a reward for two of you. If he teaches the third person, he will get a reward for that man's good deed and I will get a full reward of myself, yourself, himself and the other one and you will get a threefold reward and so on. Can you imagine the reward of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Mu'allim al-bashariyat al-khayr, the one who taught entire mankind all the goodness that we have. Wallahi, every time you do any ibadah, who taught you? Is it not ultimately Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Look at the amount of reward that he is clocking one after the other, after the other, millions, billions, trillions of rewards. Subhanallah. So his level is going higher and higher and higher every day, even though he has the highest level. Afdalul khalqi wa akramul rusuli. The best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah. Do you not want to share some of that investment? Do you not want to share a portion of that prophet? If the answer is yes, then you can learn, you can put into practice and you can teach. So today, let me teach you one hadith. عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ فَإِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٍ A true believer, his or her affairs are amazing. عَجِيب, عَجَب They are amazing, always amazing. You are a believer, you have iman, you believe in Allah, you trust Allah, you know who is Allah, He made you. He's in control of everything. You are going to go back to him. You know the Allah, you worship him. Then, then you are a mu'min. If you are a mu'min and a believer, your affairs must always be amazing. Why? Because if something good happens to you, you do not become proud. You do not become arrogant. You do not become abusive, haughty, big man syndrome. No, you thank Allah. In asabathu sarra'u shakara fakana khayr Allah. When good comes to him, he thanks Allah. How do you thank Allah? Number one, you can thank Allah with your tongue. Allahumma laka alhamdu wa laka shukr. Oh Allah, to you is all praise, to you is all thanks. Number two, you fulfill your duty unto Allah. 
you do your five salah, you do what is farad on you, you stay away from what is haram, that is shukr. If someone is given a gift by Allah, but does not wake up for Salatul Fajr, he is not thankful. If someone is given a gift by Allah and good comes to him from Allah, but he does not read the Quran, he is not interested in the deen of Allah, then that is very dangerous. Because sometimes Allah Almighty says when he wants to punish some people, he actually gives them the dunya. When they drown in the dunya, he punishes them. Allah says, the people who earn the wrath of Allah, when they forget Allah, when they do not remember what they were reminded, we are all reminded, we have reminders. When we don't want to listen, Allah says, such people we open for them the doors of the dunya they begin to get some people think when i have a lot of money when i have a lot of authority when i have power whatever else then that means allah is happy with me no no not necessary are you doing your salah yes allah is happy with you are you giving zakah yes Allah is happy with you. It is a sign of the love of Allah. You and I are here fulfilling salah because Allah wants you here. That's why you are here. I made a small effort, but Allah wanted me to be here. That is a sign of the love of Allah. If you are not fulfilling salah, even if you have millions and billions of rupees or dollars, whatever it is, it is not the sign of happiness of Allah. Maybe it is exactly the punishment of Allah. So Allah says, when they forgot Allah completely, the punishment came suddenly and they are confused. Why confused? Because they are thinking, Allah gave me. Why is he punishing me? That giving was the punishment. Look at Fir'aun, look at Qarun. What did they have? They had everything. That was a punishment. So the hadith says to us, when something bad happens to you, something negative happens to you, you are sick, you suffer a loss, something burned down, someone died, someone passed away. Sabara, fakana khayran A true believer, he bears sabr. What do we say? When you hear bad news, first thing, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We all belong to Allah and we are all going to return to Allah. That is a mu'min. Yes, we can cry, no problem. One, two tears, no problem. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lost his son Ibrahim, there were tears filled in his eyes. Innama hiya rahmatun ja'alaha Allahu fi ibadihi ruhamahu. This is a mercy of Allah. Sometimes we are human, we can feel, we can cry, no problem. But do not cry because you are fighting Allah, no. Do not cry because you are questioning Allah, no. Do not cry because you are defying Allah, no. We are crying because we suffer the loss, but we are happy with the taqdeer of Allah. Ar-rida bil qada. Highest level or that a believer can get to is to be happy with qada. If you are happy with what Allah has chosen for you, when negative comes to you, Alhamdulillah, 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 Thumma Alhamdulillah, Allah is your Lord. He will keep you healthy, He will keep you unhealthy, He will give you, He will take from you, He will test you, that is Allah. Allah says, we will test you, all of you. Allah 
وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون Allah says we will test all of you all of you with some tests what is it fear خوف جوع hunger نقص من الأموال loss of wealth Allah will test you and I if you have a business you are making profit for 10 years one day you have to make a loss because Allah needs to test you I gave you I gave you you are happy I gave you you are happy when I take from you are you still happy with me yes I am happy with you O oh Allah that is a mu'min Alhamdulillah نقص من الأموال والأنفس Allah says death will happen around you someone you love your spouse your parent your sibling your child whoever it may be Allah can take them away it is hard we are human we we cry sometimes we will miss them but you believe in Allah oh Allah make it easy for that for, for us wala naqulu illa ma yurdi rabbuna we will only say what pleases Allah be careful when someone passes away make dua Maghfira. Ask Allah to forgive us. When someone passes away, it should be ibra for us. Ibra means a lesson. Lesson for us. If you see people passing away and you are still not doing your salah and your ibadah, you are still not leaving haram, you did not learn the lesson. You did not learn the lesson. So Allah is telling us very beautifully that I will test you. Loss of wealth, Loss of people, نقسم من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات, produce. Sometimes you have a farm. You here we have a few farms, right? Sometimes the crop crop is very good. Alhamdulillah. Sometimes I try very hard, but the crop is gone. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal wa a'udhu billahi min hal ahl al-nar. I praise Allah on all conditions good comes alhamdulillah bad comes alhamdulillah positive comes alhamdulillah negative comes alhamdulillah prophet comes alhamdulillah loss comes alhamdulillah that is a mu'min that is a mu'min and i seek allah's protection from the condition of those who will be cast in hellfire so this is a hadith i show i thought i would share with you because today in the world we are going through so many challenges so many struggles People are suffering. People are struggling. Don't lose your iman. Don't lose your faith. Become strong. Some people, when they suffer loss, they go to drink. They go to gamble. They go to do haram. They think, I'm depressed. Let me do whatever. I will feel happy. You will become more depressed. Something bad happened. Come to salah. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا حزبه أمر فزع إلى الصلاة. When the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was overcome by something, immediately he rushed towards salah. Two rakat salah. Dua, dua today, tomorrow, the next day, every day. Maybe Allah will give you in one day. Maybe He will give you in one year. Maybe He will give you in ten years. Maybe he will not give you. He will give you in the akhirah. No problem. Alhamdulillah. We are happy. Mu'min is always happy till you die. When you die, you have to have husnul dhanni billah. You must have hope in Allah. We are mu'min. We read the shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. That is very powerful, powerful words. Thank Allah. Have husnul dhanni billah. Allah will forgive us. Allah will give us Jannah. I always say the magicians of Musa alayhi salam, the magicians of Musa alayhi salam at that time, they became mu'min. They did one sajda, one sajda. Fir'aun executed them. One sajda, Allah forgave them. They were new Muslims. 
New Muslims, they said, we have hope that Allah will forgive our sins and He will give us Jannah. فَقْضِ مَا أَنْتَ قَابْ إِنَّمَا تَقْضِ هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا They told Fir'aun, Fir'aun, do what you want. You can only do something in the dunya. Wait for the akhirah. Allah is in control. Allah is in control. They were happy. One sajda, Allah gave them maghfira. How many sajdas did you and I do in our lives? So many, so many. May Allah accept even one. May Allah accept our salah and our zakah, our ibadah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us rahmah and maghfira. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the people of this beautiful community of Tankaria. I am so happy to be here. This was very impromptu, meaning I did not plan this. Allah planned it. They asked me, will you say a few words? I said, why not? Bismillah. May Allah Almighty grant acceptance to our children and keep them steadfast on the deen. To our young boys, the elderly, our fathers, our grandfathers, may Allah keep us on the deen. Please be concerned about the deen. The deen is very important. Our children and our grandchildren, spend time with them, give them time. Time is very important. If you talk to them, teach them, speak to them, you will help to save them. If you have no relation with the children, they will be related to the phone. They will be related to the television. They will be related to outside influence, which is not good for you. It's not good for the deen. So take it seriously. I usually travel to many, many countries and I always give the same nasiha to say, please look after the children. Today, the people are really fighting over our children. They want to get to the children before we do. So we need to take heed. We need to make sure that we try our best. May Allah Almighty accept all of us. I was supposed to speak for five minutes, but al hasanatu bi ashri amthaliha. I spoke for many more minutes, 17, 18 minutes. Forgive me for taking so long, but there is some sakina in this masjid and we ended up speaking so much. Barakallahu feekum wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala.